Welcome to Bahati, talking about real issues that are affecting you as an individual. Insights about financial and personal growth plus better relationships. And now, Bahati. Yep, here we are again talking about how to thrive, how to live our best lives and how to be able to apply the things that we have learned over time. I believe that we have, I mean, gotten so many things. We have soaked in a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and now it's time to put into action. And that is why we are here today. So we can, number one, pray together, and then number two, dive into today's lesson in the hope that we can apply it and live our best lives, okay? So welcome, welcome to all the trailblazers. Remember, our trailblazer journal is still up and blazing. It's a prayer and a planner, a daily prayer and a planner and a business workbook. And it's just making rounds and it's getting us all powered up to make sure that we end the year strong, start the year strong, and everything in between gets rea uh, realigned, okay? So today's prayer, we say that today, may you get renewed strength. May you remember the vision for your life and align your actions with it. May you let go of anything that holds you back from your purpose and the things God wants for you. May you be a light wherever you go. And I pray this over you, that may you be a light wherever you go. And a light cannot be lit and put under the table. A light is supposed to be on top of the mountain. A light is supposed to scream. A light is supposed to provide light to travelers and people that are, mo are moving. And that means that you should be a trailblazer. You should be going ahead and not just waiting in panic and in fear and staying behind the crowds and hiding yourself in fear, in anxiety and in depression. So you are meant to hold the torch and you're meant to fight to be a pathfinder. You're meant to fight through. You're meant to go forth and you're meant to be resilient, bold and activate every vision that God has put inside of you. I have prayed over your family, over your finances, over your businesses, over your children, over your vision and over every single action that you're going to do in alignment with your vision to the fulfillment of what your life is supposed to look like. Okay, so I I love you and um when it comes to today, I really want us to, 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 to flip and it's not far away from the prayer. Now, I, some, I don't colorate these things and sometimes I don't plan them together. This prayer with what we are going to talk about are things that after opening today's prayer, I was like, okay, so it's exactly the same with what I want to talk about today. And I want to talk about limiting beliefs. Let me tell you, when we talked about reclaiming your yeah, and if you've not yet watched that video, go to my YouTube channel and make sure that you you watch it when i talked about reclaiming your yeah when i talked about renewing your strength when i talked about you still have some time you can still run you can still achieve the things that you need to achieve it's never too late for you okay now so many of us i realized that from chatting with you from the comments i got on that video from the feedback i got for you that are watching on tv and the feedback i got from the, those that were watching on Online, it was the same string of communication that you were bringing back to me and I realized that so many of us are holding on to limiting beliefs okay we are holding on to limiting beliefs and we don't know that they are actually limiting beliefs okay and so we have defined our lives like this God defined our lives and when God defines your life he says you are beautifully and wonderfully made and there is no way we can talk about limiting beliefs without talking about affirmations and confessions and there's no way we can talk about affirmations and confessions without us seeing ourselves in the picture or uh, of how God actually looks at us so that means we cannot do away with God in this conversation so I want you to um, brace yourself okay because this is going to be a vivid and a bold talk and these are some of the things that I have lived when people came back to me with limiting beliefs I realized that so many times in my life I have actually had those limiting 
limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs is not necessarily someone else telling you something about yourself. I don't know why we are so cruel and so judgmental to ourselves that we end up creating these things within ourselves and telling ourselves these stories and rehearsing them over and over and over again. And then they tend to become strongholds because a belief, when it becomes a stronghold, we build it into a stronghold because it begins like a belief. It's light. It's something you can overcome. You can change your mind anytime. You can redefine your life. You can choose to read the word of God and understand what it says about you. You can choose to listen to people that are speaking positivity and change something about you. But because we rehearse them from childhood, okay, and then when we rehearse them, they become part of our story. And when they become part of our story, they start bearing fruits, okay, vivid fruits that people can see. That so-and-so is gripped with fear that she can't speak in public. That so-and-so believes they're not good enough so they do not want they want to stay in isolation they don't want to go out that so and so does not believe they are good enough or they believe they're really bad so they can't start a business so you realize that the limiting beliefs do not just stay within and end at that they bear fruits and let me tell you the worst of the fruits is when your children get to eat the fruits of your bad and limiting beliefs because they tend to see their father as a failure they tend to see their mother as a failure and i want us to go remember i warned you that this is going to be a bold talk and um, when you find me um stepping at your toes yeah, I need you to think and say, you know what, give it to me direct. Because if you take it in corners, I will not understand. So I want to give it to you direct. So many of us, even, I mean, you can be the greatest CEO. And limiting beliefs do not fear your titles. Limiting beliefs do not fear your wealth. Limiting beliefs do not fear your religion. Limiting beliefs do not fear how ma your, your educational background. Limiting beliefs do not fear whether you're beautiful or ugly. Limiting beliefs just don't fear anything that your connections, no, it just doesn't. Because remember, it's in the mind. And our battles are the biggest battlefields, okay, that if Evil and good are constantly uh, fighting and let me tell you the best of all and the worst of all the best of all is we can choose which side wins and the worst of all is we can choose which side wins and so many of us have not been intentional at choosing the right side to, to win and we have just left it to chance and when you leave limiting beliefs to chance they multiply they grow they, be, they get built into anthills, anthills become mountains, and those mountains become, they distance you from your success, they distance you from your significance, they distance you from being valuable, they distance you from your wealth, they distance you from any kind of connections, they distance you, I don't know, by the time we end this talk, I want you to fear, not even fear, no, I want you to hate, yeah, though that's the right one. I want you to hate limiting beliefs. And I want you to take a pen and a paper and write down all your limiting beliefs so that we can reconstruct them and be able to make something that is totally different. I don't want you to end the year the same and I don't want you to feel like you are doing anyone a favor. Let me tell you, there are some people who love us in the seasons where we have limiting beliefs. Why? Because then they have something to gain. Just imagine if you are a wife that has limiting beliefs. Uh, that means you will feel, I am not good enough so I don't deserve to be respected. I am, I, I am not that beautiful enough. That means this person can get any other person. So you cannot, like you don't feel like you are enough. You don't feel like this is my home. Let me tell you, God's intention about marriage is that equal partners will come into a union that God ordained that is holy and that they will give birth to children and that they will move in confidence, in boldness, in a sense of unity, in a sense of belonging, with mutuality, if that word exists, that you will mutually respect each other, you will mutually be loyal to each other, you will mutually commit to each other, you will mutually, you know, be friends to each other and you will mutually 
accept each other. And so many of us, the reason as to why it can't be mutual is because we have made ourselves rugs and mops and we have put ourselves on the, we have thrown ourselves on the carpets. So we are not valuable because we believe we are not valuable. We believe we are not good enough. We have all those limiting beliefs. And I said sometime when we were doing the coach experience, I said that if you show someone that they were doing you a favor to be in your life, that person is going to start disrespecting you because you have disrespected yourself. It's so easy for that person to disrespect you. So you see that your limiting beliefs are hindering you in marriage. They are hindering you in business. That is why in business you are busy fighting every person. Okay. You think you are competing with everyone. Okay. So you are busy hating on other people. You're busy because you believe you are not intelligent enough, okay? So you cannot formulate ideas of your, or, or, of your own. So now you tend to be more of a copycat and whatever you're copying is not progressing instead of collaborating with them. Because this is the generation where we thrive on partnerships, on collaboration. We thrive on a sense of community and working together. But if you are the kind that is in isolation and in Kamoli and looking at everyone and saying, they went to the shrine in order to, 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 to be that rich. You know, um, th th this is what they are doing. They are doing dubious things. You know, this is what they are, why? Because you believe you are not good enough. Otherwise, if you believed you were good enough, you will be like, you know what? Bring on the competition, okay? As in, wh wh whatever it is, and you will be like, you know what? Be good in your game, and I will be good in your game. I will not hate on you. In fact, I will support you. We will all grow. We will all thrive, and we will all be happy. There is space on top for everyone and let me tell you it's actually decongested at the top why because everyone with limiting beliefs is down here at the at the slope of the mountain trying to hit another person trying to pull down another person trying to insult them trying to quack waka kokola trying to do all sorts of dubious things why because you are still at a low level when you start going up, then you realize that you must shift in your, in, in your beliefs, okay? And that is where it's so easy. Let me tell you, for everyone that has gone up the mountains or has gone from glory to glory, there are so many, and I want you to critically look at their lives. There is one thing that is consistent in all of them, their relationship with God. And... I will not just speak about my God because then I know that we are sharing this information as so many of us. Whether you're Muslim, whether you're Catholic, whether you're Protestant, whether every one of us has a God that we believe in. Everyone that is super successful gets their power from somewhere. So if it's not from Abba Father, God that we, that we believe in, there are other people that have uh, their own gods. But let me tell you, they will still believe in, their own, in, 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 in those gods. They will hold on tight and they will believe that we are, we, 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 we cannot be killed. They will believe that we are, we, we are strong. They will believe that we are shielded. How do you think a person that goes to a shrine, and I'm, I'm not saying that going to a shrine is, but I'm telling you that when some people hook into other powers, then they become formidable that is why a person will go to a shrine they will give them a stick and they will tell them go to your business and brush your teeth with this with this while you're saying certain words and you will get so many customers that day and let me tell you that person will take a stick they will not even know the content of the stick or what is in that stick and they will go and let me tell you Number one, you can never go and start uh, speaking and brushing your teeth in open while everyone has already opened their businesses. So you will find that that person is going to wake up at 4 a.m. and get to their stall or their marketplace or whatever their shop is or whatever their offices are. They will get there at 5 and then they will start the rituals. Remember, they have opened earlier than you, okay? So now they are there and whoever comes, when the customer comes, they will handle them so well. Why? Because they, feel, they believe they have a backup force they they are god okay the one they went to is actually going to help them and so all of a sudden they're handling people well all of a sudden the customer care is so well all of a sudden what they have a backed up force now you you will sit there and say ah but they have a wrong force backing them how many people that have the right forces backing them can even try to reevaluate and even realign their belief systems and be able to perform well in the marketplace, be able to perform well in their offices, be able to perform? So whoever you see growing has a power somewhere. To others, their powers are in the shrines. 
to, to us, our powers are in God. And let me tell you, when we believe that we can do anything, we can do anything, that everything is possible, let me tell you, everything becomes possible. Now, there's something that I credit, I, I credit my mother for, that right from childhood, I, my mother got into church before my father actually even accepted to come into church. I remember we were so young. For my mother, it was actually um, a sickness that got her into church because she had suffered this sickness for quite a long time and um, it was nearly driving her crazy. And I remember one time she just said, you know what, I think I, I better go to church. But now, before even going, now I'm remembering that before even going to that uh, church, because I remember it was um, Jesse C in Mombasa, but before that, there was a certain church, and I told my mother recently, I will have to go to church one day, one time. I will have to go, to go and look for that church. And even if I never find it, maybe it will not be there. But it was Kaloleni in Chonyi, that is Mombasa. And then you go reserve, you go deep in the village. Now, I remember she was not even born again. She was not um, a committed born again. She was not even committed, but she was not born again. But I think because of the different situations and the things that she was going through, she was in a forest. Rainland. I've told you about my mother's story so many times. She was an outcast. She was all by herself with her children, struggling and fighting to survive every day. She was literally sinking, surviving, oscillating between sinking and surviving and dying, okay, together with her children, us. So I remember one time she took us to uh, that church. It was in Kaloleni. I remember it didn't even have a roof. I remember it was the, the, the roof was Makuti, for those of you that... Um, um, no Swahili. You know, Makuti uh, is really palm leaves that have been joined together and that is what we used to, the houses we used to stay in were really um, not grass uh, thatched but they were Makuti <laughs> thatched. Okay, so I remember it was just, you know, the, the pastoral pavilion or where the pastors stand that is where, I remember there was this big tree in that church that was drying up and I remember as a child I was busy uh, you know, playing around in, 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 in uh, but I was understanding on the, on, 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 on the roots of that and I remember her she, she was even Catholic by then and she was you know committed that every Sunday she would dress us up to take us and it was let me tell you that church could have been more than 20 miles I'm, I'm not really good with distance but it was very far because we had to skip over five villages in order for us to get remember I am young she has Gloria as well the one that follows me and she's my mother was tiny as a stick and we would walk that distance but she walked more distances to go fetch water and get food and do whatever it is so I remember seeing her crying and kneeling down I don't remember what she was praying about even when we were uh, back in the vid deepest village in Mombasa I remember she was praying in, in Luganda and I didn't know Luganda by then I was I, I, all I knew was Swahili but I remember she was crying and traveling before God and so that that created something in me that even when we crossed over from Choni and came to um to Mombasa and uh, all of a sudden we're in Likoni and uh, she joins uh, JCC. I remember immediately I went into Sunday school and I started doing all these acts. I started doing, now remember from child from childhood now I'm cramming scriptures, okay? I remember at one time she used to even tell people, you know my child can pray for you and you can get healed and I remember people would come to our house and let me tell you, our house was one single room that had the curtain in between that separated my parents' bed and where the children used <laughs> where the children used to sleep and let me tell you we would get visitors from church that is how my mother I think she was a pastor from the beginning so now people come in and then I remember one time I came back from school and she would tell them that you know what my child can pray for you and you you you, you, you will be fine and one time she told me lay hands on her and 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 pray now I don't know why she got that Sometimes I just don't, I mean, disbelief when I look at my mother and the things that she has done. But cramming the scriptures, going to Sunday school, doing those Christmas plays did something about my belief system. It rewired my belief system. It made me believe that everything was possible. Like everything was possible. From a young age, I believed that me and God, like we are the majority, it's God and I against the world. Like there is nothing I could never do that. Even when we went through all the, the, the suffering that we went through, the lack, 
the not going to school, the dropping out of school, the everything that having nowhere to, 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 to sleep, um, sleeping with hens and, and goats in the same room. As in, even when we went through all that, let me tell you, the mind is the biggest thing. It's the biggest battlefield. But if you choose now, for me, I was wired from childhood to choose the winning side. Like all I knew was God. And all I knew and was holding on to was God. So I did not see everything else. And up to now, I usually ask myself, why did I belittle everything that was bad? Because as a girl, I could have chosen at a very young age because anyone would have said, you know what, you have suffered enough. I could have chosen to go out with men, to go out with boys. I should have, I could have chosen to do. But I believed that there was a plan of, God had a plan for me. I didn't know what the plan was, but I believed that God had a plan and the plan was good and the plan was to give me a good ending. Guys, I told you that when I was in primary, I was thinking of building a mega house. I was thinking of driving posh cars. And like you would think, ah, this is a child. Uh, uh, what, does she, what business does she have? But let me tell you, it's today when I was actually preparing myself to come and talk to us and have this conversation that I was like, I have never had space in my life. I have never had space in my life to doubt the plan of God upon my life. Even in the most difficult of times, I have never doubted the word of God upon my life. And that has carried me through. I have never had a debate of, I am good enough, I am not good enough. I have never had a debate of, I'm, am I beautiful, am I not beautiful? I have never had the debate of, is this possible or it's not possible? And that is why, uh, even in my family, they are like, you know what? Echiganye, chikwase hilda, as in, handle it to her, uh, give, give it to her, because she will know what to do. She will make impossibilities possible. Why? Because from a young age, I was immersed in the one that had the best beliefs about me and one that orchestrated my life, one that promised me a good ending, and one that says I will take you from glory to glory. And I understood that after I have grown, I got to understood that, I'm sorry, to understand that, in between glory to glory is a process, and sometimes God will never tell us that process. But that process also is maintained and upheld by the beliefs that we have. If it's wrong beliefs, believe me, we are dead and nothing good is going to happen. I know that I can, and I can go marathon on this, but I want to believe that you know your beliefs. Before we even dive, dive into them, I know that you know the things that are holding you back. I know that you know the things that are holding you back from that promotion. I know that you know the things that are holding you back from starting that business. I know that you know the things that are holding you back from even starting that relationship. I know you know the things that are holding you back from even claiming or going back to school. I know you know the things that are holding you back, okay? And I'm surprised that you're not doing anything about them. But again, you not doing anything about them is not changing anything, okay? It's not making anything better. It's making everything. It's delaying you. It's making you frustrated. It's making you agitated. It's making you sad. It's making you angry about yourself. And all those things, if you cannot use them as a fuel to actually realign your belief system, you're going to find yourself going from failing to failure and to... <laughs> I was, I was about to say failiest. <laughs> As in, that is how much you are going to sink. Because if you're not going up, you are going down. And if your belief systems cannot change, that means you are believing in less of the beautiful, nice things in your life, and you're believing all the bad things. You're believing that economy is going to swallow you. You're believing your business will never survive and it will never thrive. You're, building, you're believing your children will never amount to anything. And sometimes you even fear to say them. But low key in your heart, and that's the worst, because when you say something, then we can fight it. For example, my, my mentees, I mean, where wherever they are in the world, I have told them, do not hesitate. If you have any limiting belief and something just comes through you, send me a text, 
call me up, as in let's talk so that we can find the truth and be able to clarify whether that limiting belief is actually the truth. And you will find that all limiting beliefs are never the truth. It's just a self-talk that is sinking you, that is making you a failure, that is making you miss your blessings and is making you miss your promotions or whatever it is, but you keep telling yourself the same story. And let me tell you, this originates from I've said it so many times, that our brains are wired to protect us. Now, if we think that rewiring or realigning our, our, our beliefs is actually going to be hard, okay? So now our brains are keeping us from hard. They are protecting us. So they are protecting us by keeping us on the same level. The same level where we are agitated, whether we, where we are irritated, where we are frustrated and disappointed, but it is a familiar level and it is a comfort zone because now we know our way around and we are okay. We are not that bad. We are just okay. Let me tell you, it just doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me. Being okay? No. No, 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 no. I believe not just in, in the intermediary. I don't believe in just good enough. I don't believe, no, 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 no. I don't believe in that. I believe in the best. I believe in the extreme and I believe everything are achievable. Remember I told you where my belief systems stem from? And let me tell you, that is an unshaken ground. Why? Because God will never look at me and say you're a failure. No. He has said I am a winner. He has said I will forever be a, a head and never a tail. He has proclaimed my, my ending based on the beginning. And he's the Lord of all times. And so I am never shaken because I am holding on to the biggest, not even the biggest thing, but the creator of the heavens and earth. Okay. And so I am unshakable. Why? Because my belief system are rooted somewhere deeper than what the devil can even shake or even recreate. He might shake me up a bit, but let me tell you, he will never shake God. And so if I'm holding on to God, however much I am shaken, I can never be tossed around. I'm still holding on to the biggest and most powerful source in my life. So I hope uh, you, you, you understand that. And I hope that we get to reevaluate ourselves. And I want to give you some time, just a few, a few minutes or a few seconds to reevaluate and take a moment to just think deeply what is holding you back. Write it down, then come back. Let's have this conversation. Spirit TV, a place for you. Did you know that you can acquire a skill in less than three months? Dynamic Media School skills you in TV and radio presenting, motion graphics, graphics designing, control room management, show production, audio production, confidence building, lighting and videography, personal branding, social media management, cinematography, video editing, marketing and sales, and effective communication. This is designed to provide practical skills and hands-on experience with a focus on developing critical thinking, research, and communication skills. You will have access to high-quality learning materials including online lectures and other resources as well as a dedicated team of facilitators and influencers who are available to assist you with any questions or concerns that you might have. Enroll today call 0702 021 834 or WhatsApp 0760-881-331. Dynamic Media School is an excellent choice for anyone looking to start or advance their career in this exciting and dynamic field. You don't get the life that you deserve, but that which you decide. It's time for you to decide to dominate your life. You don't do that by just having passion, you need a plan. Let's show you how you grow practically in character, competence, and in other areas of life. Welcome back to Bahati. So, have you taken time and um, yeah, just thought about your life from childhood, the things that you have been through, how they have formulated your belief system and how they have sedimented your belief systems and how your belief system or your beliefs have actually become a mountain and um, not just a mountain but a stronghold in your life okay that right now you are look the only lenses that you have is through the be limiting beliefs that you have about yourself and um let me tell you this the people that um 
that fail to make it or are going to fail to make it are actually so many. But I don't want you to be in that bracket. I don't want to be just an existing statistic of people that failed, okay? Because again, we do not celebrate failures and we do not even um, yes, we might keep a database of, of, of failures, but we'll never look at it from time to time. But we are looking at people who are succeeding because others are, are going faster, others are going slower, others have uh, created their own rhythm. And so we are looking at some of these things, some of these people, we are learning from them. So all eyes in the world are actually on the winners. But remember, the winners have struggled. There are those that are not privileged or were not privileged in their upbringing that their mothers actually took them to church or took them to um you know, made them um, know themselves and understand themselves according to God. My mother has prayed over us that even, I mean, you know the constant praying over you, like you clearly know that even right now, I know that when she prays, she mentions my name, she mentions my husband's name, my, she ma my husband's name, she mentions my children's name. She knows all our businesses. She knows everything that we do. And so just imagine when you have some, uh, some something like that at the back of your mind. And let me tell you, both our mothers and both our mothers are Christians. My husband's, my mother-in-law is, is um, Christian and my mother is Christian. So most times when we are speaking, we are like, you know what? Christian, the Christians are praying for us, okay? And we take pride in that. We're like, yes, we are prayerful because my husband and I have made prayer a lifestyle. Like, we literally, I think the people that find us in jam, find us in traffic, find us on the road, they're like, these are mad, too mad people. But you will find us in the car he's driving, I'm in the co-driver's seat, but we are raising our hands, we are worshiping, we are praying, and we have made it a lifestyle. Why? Because... We are not even being too intentional to pass down what was passed to me as a person, but I am so intentional about praying over my children and making sure that they see themselves in the image of God and how God actually views them and the plans that he has for them. Because for me, that has been the only thing, the only thing. Let me tell you, take everything from me. Take all the money, take all uh, the pleasures of this world, take everything, leave me with my God we can thrive and flourish everywhere. I can thrive and flourish everywhere because I don't believe that anything, I am supposed to fail at anything. If I'm supposed to excel and excel and excel. So I need you to let go of the old ways and the old thinking and the old belief systems and change your beliefs, okay? Because one thing I have found out is for the people that I have mentored over time, I have had to tell them, do not be offended if you feel your belief is being attacked. Because in order for you to change, you need to be able to be mature, okay? Spiritually flexible. To know that, by the way, it's possible that I know God, that may, but maybe I'm just saying him on the mouth. Because you confessing God or you saying, um, even confessing scripture or even, like it's not enough if you do not believe in, believe in it. Because beliefs are created by believing. And believing is created by sometimes hearing, okay, and sometimes our inner battles and our inner conflicts because of everything that is happening to us then we tend to believe in certain things when you grow up and your mother is calling you ugly when you grow up and your you know your relatives everyone is saying that is why you should guard children's hearts okay it doesn't matter where it is you doing your lugambo and gossip around children that is how they learn to hate on people that is how you you, you even comment about their legs like your, your leg is too big that it, 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 it's, it's bad, it's disgusting. As in, you're not the creator of her leg. Can you leave her alone, okay? And then you dissing either their parents or dissing whatever it is. As in, can you be an ambassador for good belief systems that every child or every person that comes into your circles will be, you know, you will be the one that is exuding, the one that is emi the, the illuminate, or illuminating with good belief systems that other people can catch on those. Yesterday I was meeting with um, one of the, the people that I'm really, really, really proud of, that is Coach Marjorie. And I was telling her that, you know what, I told you guys, when you signed up for the mentorship, because she came in the very first cohort of the accelerated mentorship. So I told her that I think you guys, while we were um, 
I was speaking to you because that actually that cohort was completely an online cohort. And so when I was talking to you and telling you that God is going to open doors, you guys just continue growing, continue giving of yourself, continue creating your brands. So you guys didn't see because now she's busy traveling. Right now she's collaborating with inter international companies and organizations. And so I was telling her, so mm -hmm, all the while I was telling you these things, I think you were there saying, but this woman, I think she just loves talking about big things, but I don't don't think these things will actually ever come true and indeed some of them did not believe but Marjorie looked at me in the eyes and told me actually everything you said I used to note down and I believed what you said and let me tell you her belief differentiates her from so many people and the things that she has been able to do and the things that she's going to be able to do now the speed at which we run is controlled by your belief systems the speed, your growth speed, okay? The multiplication of your business, the multiplication of your company, your organization, the growth of your company, the turnover <laughs> of your company. I will tell you, there is a baseline of your belief systems because sometimes when you don't believe something is good enough, you're not going to advertise it. There are people who are seated on their products. Why? Because their belief system have failed them and they're thinking, ah, this, this book is not good enough, so I'm not going to sell it. Or I'm just, I don't look good enough, so I'm not going to appear on camera. I'm not going to be on social media. And so we have all those limiting beliefs in us. So I've told you that you have to be emotionally mature that when you be, you feel that your emo, your belief systems are being attacked or oh, i am talking about them right now you have to be emotionally mature not to say ah that is how that is what they keep saying but again what else would she say you get it that is you being emotionally immature that means you don't know what you want if you know what you want and you know that there's something that is limiting you, right now you'll be getting a paper and a pen to write down. Maybe it's about a business and you're like, okay, what are my, belie but what are my limiting beliefs in this business, in this ministry, in this marriage, in my life, okay? In whatever it is, in creating my personal brand, what are my limiting beliefs? So I need you to be able to understand that you have to be emotionally mature and number two, be spiritually flexible. Some of you believe, um, and I don't want you to get me wrong, but we believe that we must pray, 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 pray. I believe in the power of prayer. Prayer is my lifestyle. Like I literally sometimes even fail to hook out or plug out of prayer sessions. You know how you plan that I'm going to pray for 30 minutes and you, you, you find yourself, you can't stop yourself from praying and it has gone up. So I believe in prayer. But again, I don't just believe that prayer in isolation is going to get you anywhere. Because even when you say, oh, God, do it for me. Oh, God, grow my business. Oh, but again, you have limiting beliefs that are contradicting the prayer that you are making. That means that your actions and your belief system should be in alignment with the kind of prayer that you are making in order to see results. So do you see? that you can speak in tongues all you want, you can be fire spitting all you want, you can drip in the Holy Spirit all you want, you can do everything, you can even sleep in church. But for as long as you have limiting beliefs, you are headed for nothing, nothing. Because even when it comes to miracles, miracles do not come to people that have limiting beliefs. Because you must have faith. Now, faith contradicts with limiting beliefs because limiting beliefs operate in fear limiting beliefs operate in inadequacy Lim limiting beliefs operate in i'm not good enough limiting belief or li beliefs or uh, operate in i don't deserve this so if you believe you don't deserve this you're actually not going to get it the people that get miracles are people that align and they're like you know what I, am, I, I believe 100% that I deserve this, that I am a candidate for this, that the next level is mine. Let me tell you, uh, actions do not just come as actions. Actions step from, stem, stem from your belief system. Okay? So that is where you can never have actions that are incongruent or out of alignment with your belief system and you think you're going very far. No, your belief system will be pulling you down. So the moment you believe that, you know what, I can do anything. Just like I believe, I can, anything, I, everything is possible. So drop me anywhere 
I will do everything in alignment with what I believe in order to get the results that I believe I deserve. So if it is to work hard, I will work hard. If it is to put in extra time, I will put in extra time. Yesterday I was talking to Tim and I was telling him, I, I don't know the people in this generation and how they think really. Because if someone favors me, if I gain favor in someone's sight, and they love on me and they're willing to support me. Let me tell you, I will go to the moon and back for them. Like I will somersault to make sure everything is fine. But in this generation, when you favor someone, Kamanyiro is, is, is the result. When you favor someone, then they start taking everything for granted. When you favor someone, then they start, the familiarity becomes so bad that they cannot even lift a finger to do anything that is in alignment with the favor that they have received. What is that? If we have not become the foolish Galatians that the Bible talks about, like who bewitched us? When someone extends a hand of favor, then push yourself as hard as you can. Not just in prayer, but give, commit your time. Okay, ask them, where do you want me to serve you? <laughs> you know, how much more can I do? Okay, and go ahead and do that because then that means that increases your favor. Do you know that favor decreases and it can also increase? So there are people that I have favored in my life and because of what they are doing with the favor I have extended them, my favor, because favor is created by sight, okay? And favor is created in proximity and favor is created in activity, okay? So... My, they have their favor or favor towards them has decreased because of what they are doing. Because when you do the familiarity thing, when you do, when you stop doing the things that I thought you would do, because but when someone favors you, it's because they have expectations. <laughs> I said it. When someone favors you, it's because they have expectations. Why? Because they have seen something good inside of you. So that means. Their hope is that you will grow to a certain capacity, that you will become better. And now because they are favoring you, they're like, I am going to hold your hand. I am going to provide the resources that you need. I am going to be on call every time. I am going to be your friend. I will mentor you. I will give of myself. And then all of a sudden, you disappoint them and stop growing. You disappoint them and stop showing up. You disappoint them because then you think that favor, once favored, forever favored. That is not how favor works. Once favored, you must do things and actions that grow or maintain that favor. Or the favor is gone. And let me tell you, even in the eyes of God, yes, he loves us so much and his love will never go from us. But he expects so much from us. He knows that we are gifted. He knows that our blueprint is of greatness. He knows that we're supposed, but because of the limiting beliefs and because of self-sabotaging, everything we are like, ah, you know what? So you don't wake up early, you don't show up for the job, or you don't, you know? So but why? You know, God, 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 God. And then we have made God look so cheap, like a cheap commodity, because we are uttering him out of our mouths and then our actions are suggesting something different limiting beliefs so if you don't believe that you're good enough if you're fighting with inferiority complex and I mean you, you're not even showing up you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do what are we supposed to do for you okay so I need you to be mature enough okay and then I need you to be spiritually flexible okay and I am not hating on you but I have to tell you that this is not sufficient that whatever you are believing in whatever your belief system are whatever you that is not sufficient if you need to go to the next level whatever happened at the previous level is not going to sustain you at the next level or is not going to take you at the next level so something has to change and one of the things that has to change your beliefs have to actually change okay and in this episode or whatever chat we are having right now i have to expose the deficiencies okay so that i can be able to stir you up to desire and pursue god's best for you i have to expose them so and in exposing them you must help them with me and be able to know to look deep down into your life and see what is failing me what are my limiting beliefs because then as i stir you up to believe that there's something better that there's a better promotion there's a better job there's a better success a better significance there's a better as in there's a better everything okay but 
where you are and where the better is. Whatever deficiencies you have here, if not exposed and dealt with, they are not going to take you or even maintain you or grow you to the next level. Okay? So, so many of us are settling. We are settling at the comfort. Why? Because it's possible, you know, and then um, you be playing a victim, okay? And that just saying, oh, my parents didn't plan for me. Let me tell you, <laughs> some of us are far away from planned kids. Like, we, we were totally not planning. I think our parents just this decided they were old enough to give birth, and so they gave birth to us. The only difference is when the situations got tough, they actually hooked to God, and God helped accelerate their lives to be able to bring us up in better ways okay even without money even without accommodation even without they were there i remember my mother and this is something that um i've picked from her she usually says that you know what wherever i go with my children whether we drink water whether we eat cassava whether and literally we have done everything that she has say uh, she has said uh, apart from uh, sleeping maybe uh, at a dustbin somewhere but if it's drinking water we have drunk water with our mother and we have prayed and slept if it is um, um I, I mean not having food if it is but even without being planned for god planned for us he planned that we will have a good ending. He planned that when we hook up into him and change our beliefs and grow our beliefs in him and not self-sabotage, step by step and glory to glory, we are going to get to where we are. And I am so thankful about that journey. I am not so envious. I'm not even envious about planned kids because planned kids are, are tending to be a nuisance these days. They are tending to self-sabotage left, right and center. They have the weirdest wrong beliefs. Even when someone is born into wealth, you, they... Do you know that you being born into wealth does not make you wealthy? Actually, you can be the poorest of people after being born into wealth. Why? Because wealth is not going to formulate your belief system, the good belief systems. No, that goes back to you. That goes back to your resilience. That goes back to your bouncing back power. That goes back to your uh, strategy. That goes back to the God you believe in. That goes back to how you look at yourself and what is happening uh, around you, okay? So I want you to expose the, those deficiencies so you know that you can be able to go to the next level, okay? And then some of us, we don't even know that the next level exists. So we don't have an appetite for it. Yeah. Like seriously, this, this is so uh, saddening. Some of us are just living by chance. We are just living, like we just don't know what's coming up next. We just don't, we just, don't, we're just living just like that. That is why we take too long on the same levels and we just don't have an appetite because we don't think they're like, when you hear anyone, even us coming up with topics of next level, they're like, yeah, that's so cliche. Yeah, that's what every motivational speaker speaks about. Yeah, that's what every inspirational speaker speaks about. Let me tell you. It's not just uh, inspiration or motivation or whatever it is that you want to call it. Your life is supposed to be better, just like you grow. And you know growth of your body is automatic, but personal growth is not automatic. No, you have to be intentional about it, you have to plan for it, and you have to decide. You have to be deliberate, willful, and you have to want it and desire it, okay? So, because the body, it, it grows more, more and you're going to become big, you're going to put on a pot belly, you're going to, as in, that is natural. For as long as you are eating, you are growing, you are sleeping, like those are natural. But personal growth, that is why you will find a man that is 50 years old and they are reasoning. Um, a seven-year-old is reasoning better than them. A seven-year-old has better belief systems than them. A seven-year-old, why? Because they just grew in, 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 in body, okay? And, but this person that has taken time to pray, this time has, has taken time to listen to good, inspiring, motivational content, is rewiring their mindsets, is feeding on, on, on faith, okay? And starving all their fears, okay? And that person becomes so good. They are 14 years old, they are 19 years old, they are 22 years old but they are way better okay so i need to do that uh to rewire your belief systems okay i am not going to be able to finish everything that i actually prepared but you have to let yourself allow yourself experience some of these things because one of the ways 
we actually get to rewire, to realign. Let me just rush to the end of this uh, so that we can be able to, uh, to, to get out of here. You need to be able to identify what your limiting beliefs are because you know them. You know them. But I need you to take a pen and a paper and write, the, and write them down. Why have you failed to do the things that you said you would do? That is keeping you in laziness, that is keeping you in poverty, that is keeping you in backwardness, that is keeping you in grumbling, that is keeping you in crying, that is keeping you in pity parting, that is keeping you in envying others and fighting others, that is keeping you in arrogance, that is keeping you, and all those things that I have mentioned, they are not taking you anywhere. So I need you to identify and write them down. Number two, I need you to assess the accuracy of those things. I want you to sit down, and sometimes you can do this with another person, and sometimes you can do it by reading the word of God, and because then it's a mirror that you look yourself at and you're saying he says that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. Let me tell you, for every limiting belief, there is something that God is saying about that limiting belief, okay? If you believe you're not beautiful enough, God says you are wonderfully and fearfully made, okay? If you think you cannot make it, God says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, okay? If, 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 if you say, I am headed nowhere, you know, he says that the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, are plans that you will have a good ending, okay? If you say, you know what, who knows about me? And I, I mean, I, 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 I don't think my life will ever amount to anything. He says that uh, before your parts were woven together in the sacred places, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that I knew you and I planned for you and I know the good thoughts that I have about you. Okay, so for every limiting belief, there is something that God says about that limiting belief. Can you look at it? Can you assess it? Can you find out and say, is this clear or not clear? Okay, and then I want you to be able to use those positive, not just affirmations, because affirmations can come from human understanding. But when we say confessions, then you are confessing the word of God. And you're saying, and I don't know better way, because what I have is what I give you. There is no better thing. I know affirmations work. When you affirm, then you are building the muscle of self-belief. And you're building the muscle of good, belief, be good beliefs. Okay, So affirmations coupled with confessions from the word of God, that is going to make you. And let me tell you, just affirming and speaking and writing them down or screenshotting them, that's not going to help you. Make sure that you believe, okay? Make sure that you practice. Make sure that you remind your brain, okay? And tell yourself that, you know what? I am good enough. I am going to make it. I can thrive. I can make it out of any situation. I am not dead. This is not the end of it all. I deserve better. Okay? And make sure that you believe in what you are actually talking about. And the last thing that I will give you that I have done, cons I mean, persistently in my life is I have not given up. Because limiting beliefs will make you give up. Whenever you believe in the wrong thing, you give up. You believe in a, ba a bad thing, you give up. But one thing I have done is to pick myself up every single time I have failed. I come back online. Every single time I have driven off the rail, it's like you're, you're driving off the, the, the road. I, you know, I come back, you know, and I bring myself back. And sometimes I listen to good people. I listen to good content. I, I watch good content. I, I feed my soul. I feed my faith and starve all my fears. And that is how it is a daily journey, a daily walk, okay? Belief systems are not systems that you're going to rewire in one minute or in a day or in a month or in a year and you're done no you have to continuously work on it let me tell you even the wealthiest of people even the be i mean the people that have made it in the world it's every day is a t daily struggle to keep realigning with what the good beliefs to keep realigning with believing they deserve it they can be good enough they can bounce back from anything they can, they are going to make it whether the world wants it or not they are, as in every day they still do the work so that means there is no day that you will arrive and say i am done no, every day I also, I pep talk myself. I bring myself, because situations are going to come. Human beings are going to happen. Life is going to life, as in sadness is going to come. But is that going to take me off the, the, the road of growth? No, 
I'm going to speak myself back. I'm going to pray myself back. I'm going to read myself back. I'm going to listen to different things that are going to bring me back. I am going to create friendships and circles that encourage me to come back on track. I am going to do everything. Remind myself that I am still on this journey of growth, that there is a glory after this glory, and there is another glory after this glory, and I should not settle, that there is a next level after this level, that I should not settle. And I hope that you actually don't settle at all, okay? I told you where limiting beliefs come from, where you say I'm too old to actually to, the, to do this. I'm not smart enough. That is why in the boardroom you're not even speaking. In a meeting you're not speaking. I will never be successful. I will never have enough money. I don't have enough money as it is. And then I will never be one of the best. Let me tell you, when you say that, there is no way. Your legs will betray you. Just imagine you're in a race, you're running, and then you say I will never be the best. That means you're not going to do, you're not going to give it your best. But the moment you're like, come what may, I am winning that race. Let me tell you, that the worst that can happen, you will come second. The worst that can happen may be third, but it will never be the last. Or you will never be ungraded. Why? Because when you believe in something, you give your whole that you will never regret. And even when you come second, you'll be like, next time, I'm going to do better. So you see, you don't give up and you don't just settle and say, ah, forever I will be second. I think there are people who are naturally just meant to be the first. No, no one is naturally meant to be the first. People work themselves there and you can work them, yourself there, okay? So I want you to be able to go back and think and rethink and be able to write the opposites of what the, the limiting beliefs are. Write the opposites and let them be your mantra. Let them be your faith talk. Let them be your prayer talk. Let them be your, you know, you, you, you sleep thinking about them and read the word of God about them. Talk to people. Listen to things that build your belief systems, okay? That, that the, all the crap and the trash that we keep listening to and the distractions that we get during the day, all the memes that are quite creating a stronghold inside of us can you choose a beautiful menu even when it comes to social media that everything that is going to come to your inbox is going to be something that builds you something that builds your faith something that builds your courage something that builds your boldness and something that makes you an overcomer and something that makes you a successful and a significant person okay so guys i love you i think i should end here because i have shared what i think about limiting beliefs and I don't want any of us to be a victim. I want us to uh, be people that take matters into our own hands and reprogram our lives and it is very possible. Okay, from me to you is bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Bahati comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 p.m. here on Spirit TV. Bahati, bringing you knowledge, wisdom, financial and personal growth, better relationships leading to your transformation and elevation.